Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to the Smart Grid Seminar. Our speaker today is Dr. Ching He from Global Energy Interconnection Development and Cooperation Organization. So you talk about uh, ultra high voltage development in China and the concept of global energy interconnection. So I would like to remind everyone our next seminar is in two weeks. So that will be uh, May 13th, uh, Thursday. The speaker is James McCauley from Iowa State. And I also would like to uh, remind ev everyone that the presentations, the last two presentations on May 20th and June 3rd uh, will start at 3 p.m. instead of, uh, of 2.30 p.m. Our speaker today is Dr. Ching He, and I know he's currently in Beijing, so the time over there is 5.30 a.m. So we really appreciate that he can give this presentation at this early hour. Uh, Dr. He is a senior manager of global energy interconnection in, uh, the, in the North American office in New York City, <clears throat> where, he's, where he's responsible for technical communication, uh, he joined the company as a researcher in the economic and technology division in January two, uh, 2018. From 2018 to 2019, he was with the Africa office in Ethiopia. He started his career as a planning and operation researcher with China APRI in Beijing for seven years. And he has involved with many ultra high voltage projects. Uh, he holds a PhD in power system and automation from China Epri. So without further delay, let's uh, welcome our speaker today. Dr. Heard, you can uh, share your slides. Thanks for introduction from Chen Zhengyu. And thanks uh, Wahela doing some preparing and the, the test. I came from Gatico. North America office. GATCO is Global Energy Interconnection Cooperation and Development. I'm honored uh, to be here at the uh, Stanford Smart Grid Seminar. I will talk uh, about the uh, development of uh, ultra high voltage grid in China and the uh, global energy interconnection concept. There are two parts of my content. The first is development of neutral high voltage direct current and uh, alternation alternating current technology in China. The second part is global energy interconnection concept. We define the ultra high voltage as 1000 kilowatt Alternating current and uh, positive, negative, 800 kilovolt direct current with 1,100 kilovolt direct current power systems. We call the UHV as a shrink name. UHV has advantage like a long distance, large, capacity, high efficiency, economic land use, and so on. Second, uh, we talk about the uh, UHV driving force. In China, the energy location is quite uh, unbalanced. As we can see from the four pictures, 90% sol solar located in north and uh, northwest, 80% of the hydropower located in west and southwest. 80% of the wind power in north and northwest. 76 low coal located in north and northwest. So it's a big problem to translate this, this kind of energy. Well, over 70% of the load center concentrated in the middle and the middle east of China, which means long distance 
transmission is necessary. In some cases, it's over 3,000 kilometers. In particular, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen, the three load centers are far from this energy rich place. Early before, in order to meet the electricity demand in Middle and the Middle East, we need to transport lots of coal over 2,000 kilometers for generation, which was not very economical and uh, neither environment. But the UHV technology can uh, transmit massive electric power, including renewable energy to a far destination. The other driving force is loading increasing. Since 2000, the annual average growth of installed capacity is more than 80 gigawatt. Network and transmission capacity must be strengthened and updated. The electric price must be considered about. The price at the low center area transmitted by UHV is 0.8 US cent kilowatt an hour cheaper than local whole price. Ultra high voltage alternating current use is like this. Corridor width per unit capacity is less than 20 meters per gigawatt. Transmission power can reach four or five times than 5,000 kilowatt, kilowatt line. UHV transmission distance is two or three times of 500 kilowatt line. Ultra high voltage direct current can reach 1,000 to 4,000 kilometers and transmit seven to 12 gigawatt. It's a uh, long distance and uh, big capacity. Now we take a look at the uh, ultra high voltage direct current timeline. The first uh, high voltage direct current project is positive and negative 500 kilovolt with two gigawatt. Then the Xiangjiaba to Shanghai is proposed on 2004, which approved uh, two years later and put into operation on 2010. The total length is 1,907 kilometers. Rated power is 6.4 gigawatt. Maximum power is 7.2 gigawatt. After that, in 2017, hierarchical inflated UHV project put into operation. Then in 2019, the first positive, negative, 1,100 kilowatt UHV DC project is finished. In 2020, a multi-terminal CSC plus VSC project started sending electricity. Let's see some details. The 1,100 kilowatt UHV DC project named Zhendong to Wanan with a transmission distance of 3,324 kilometers and a rate cap capacity of 12 gigawatt. This is equal, uh, equal to four, four line of four projects with 500 kilowatt together. 
then the UHV DC hierarchical connection at uh, the receiving end to 1000 kilowatt bus and uh, 500 kilowatt bus have been used in three projects. In order to transmit renewable energy and uh, el eliminate the impact of commutation failure, voltage source converter has been researched and uh, ready to use. Let's say the multi terminals with VSC. The hybrid voltage source converter. Voltage source converter named VSC with current source converter UHV project first finished by China Southern Power Grid. China Southern Power Grid built Wudongde UHV DC project which have three terminals. One current source convent station at the sending site, two VSC station in parallel at the receiving site. This project has been has been put into operation in 2020. The, the application of UHV in India and Brazil is also encouraging. Brazil has accomplished two projects each with capacity of four gigawatt, which put into operation in 2017 and 2019. From Belo Mount to San Paulo and Rio. India has accomplished the three projects, which can provide the power for industrial and feedback economic benefit for their supplier. Now we turn to ultra high voltage alternating current projects. The first one called Jingdonglan uh, to Jingmen. This project has been in operation for over seven years since 2009. Total length is six, 114 kilometers. Nominal voltage is 1000 kilowatt. And then ultra high voltage controlled series compensation installed in December 2011. In September 2013, Huainan to Wuhu to Zhebei to Shanghai, UHV project was constructed with double circuit line on the same tower. UHV GIS breaking with capacity 63 kilo ampere. The cost of one substation is 150 to 160 million US dollar. The line cost is about uh, 0.6 million US dollar per kilometers. Now we introduce the GIL. GIL means gas isolated transmission line. UHV GIL is power transmission system with gas isolation, metal shell. The first project crossed the Yangtze River in Suzhou which is located in China grade, East China grade. The cost is much high. It costs 800 million US dollar per kilometers. The project is 5.8 kilometers, just across the Yangtze River. So after over 10 years of construction, 14 UHV AC, 15 UHV DC projects finished in China. Some renewable source 
such as wind, solar, and hydro are connected to the grid. And some projects not finished until 2021 and 2022. UGV grid have been formed. The hydropower connect to the grid is 340 gigawatt. Wind power is 170 gigawatt. Solar power is 160 gigawatt. Hydroelectricity, electrical power from the southwest, solar and wind power send from the northwest. Wind and thermal power are bounded out from the north. Inner planning, UHV project will be over 40,000 kilometers and 300 gigawatt in 2025 in the scope of SGCC. Six major regional power grids has, have been constructed. North China, Central China, East China, Northeast, Northwest, and uh, Southwest. China Southern power grid is also can be taken uh, as East and West part with UHVDC sending hydropower from the west to the east. UGV AC rings strengthen the load set as North China, Central China, East China. Now we turn to the benefit of energy in the connection with UGV grid. Wind and solar have seasonal complementary in the north of China. In this area, according to the up figure, we can see the wind power is mainly in spring and uh, winter, accounting for about uh, 60%. The figure below uh, showed that the solar also accounting for about 60% in summer and autumn. If we put the wind power and the solar power together, in one to one ratio, it will be much better and fit the load curve. curve. Wind in the north and the hydropower from the south also have seasonal complementary. The left graph shows the monthly power generation of three George hydropower plant in 2015 and 2016, hydropower generation peaks in July, August, and September. The wind power output in those three months was below the average. So if we put it together, it's uh, very good for the com complementary. Extensive interconnection reduce wide power curves fluctuation. We can see from the left figure, the output of a single wind power plant bounced up and down, but the province and the big regional grids wind output are much better. We can get the conclusion from the right, right finger. In national scale of China, solar power plant complement with Time difference from the east to west and the solar complement with wind. The uncertain decrease with the expansion of space. Four connected renewable are easy to predict. So we can see UHV technology practiced in China very well. The concept of GEI is put forward based on the UGV technology. GEI is global energy interconnection. From the start, uh, just uh, come from the challenge, such as uh, resource constraint, environment pollution, and 
climate change. Clean development is a core factor of sustainable development and the global energy concept is put forward for achieving the goal. Clean energy resource spread of the world are uh, and abandoned. So the resource needs to be converted into electricity and transmitted to the road. In the road, there are some uh, concept about how to give a solution for the clean development. And the GEI is focused about this. GEI is a clean dominant uh, modern energy system. That uh, means the, the incense of GEI is a smarter grid plus UGV grid plus clean energy. GEI can help for large scale development of clean energy, help us economic and uh, in industrial system transit to the low carbon or zero carbon. GEI proposed two replacement. The first uh, is replace fossil fuel with clean energy. The second is increasing the proportion of electricity in the terminals. Replace direct consumption of fossil energy with electricity. Clean replacement refers to take place fossil fuel in power generation, providing heat by solar energy and so on. This slide, uh, I will talk about the, the cost of clean energy. This year, the cost of clean energy is uh, getting down and getting down. The all Hangzhou wind power are expected to drop to 2.5 US cents kilowatt an hour and uh, 5.5 US cents kilowatt an hour respectively, respectively. And the PV solar has also come to the same level, I think. That means the renewable energy is cheaper than is cheaper than the gas, the coal, and any other fossil fuel. Electricity replace is increasing the proportion of electricity in terminal. Total electricity consumption will increase year by year, and the share of end use will increase to about 50% to 65% according to the different scenario in 2050. GES uh, condition depends on three facts. Now, I think there's no obstacle in the future in the next uh, 20 years or 30 years. First, the power transmission technology. The UHV has already practiced very well. And the second is the clean energy. The price of clean energy is getting down and the technology are constantly improving. The last one is smart grid technology. The smart grid technology is very important for the load. This year is already widespread. Widespread use in a lot of country. So we put the GI concept into the into some example. Based on the large scale development of clean energy and the UHV transmission technology, East Asia could be connected with Europe through Central Asia, which established the Asia to Europe, China. There is a, a five to six hours time difference if East Asia and the 
Europe are fully connected. When the East Asia in at, uh, at 8 p.m., solar power in Europe is there at the pink. It could be transmitted to East Asia for meeting the demand of load. And now we see the example of United States. NIEL have made the interconnect, interconnection same study a few years ago, which is suggest which is just the interconnection of East and West with 14.4 gigawatt interregional projects. Now we uh, look at the picture on the right. The load pink on both sides are loaded at the same uh, time. The West, the West uh, load, load pink is late than the East. So the PV generation can support the East. And in the morning, the East could be support the West. Now we give the example of the total East Asia. In the left picture, based on GI concept, East Asia forms an interconnected grid. The clean power supply with large scale interconnection and the smart grid will lead the green development. A clean and efficient energy interconnection has been designed for reduce regional carbon emission. The CO2 emission from energy will be reduced by 60% on 2035, reduced by 19% on 2050 in the end. So we think the uh, GI concept works very well. At last, to realize GI, we have three steps to go. All can put, uh, put into three stages. The first is domestic interconnection, just like uh, United States and uh, China. And the second is intercontinental interconnection. This stage, uh, I think, uh, will come in the next uh, 10 years or 20 years. The ultimate goal is global interconnection. In the, at the last stage, renewable energy from global complement with each other. In the scale of 24 hours, uh, in a scale of 24 hours, I think uh, uh, like the like the picture below, uh, the Europe, Asia, and America could uh, gathering together. GI could. Uh, they integrate the unstable clean energy and also provide the sustainable electricity to the user around the world. Maybe uh, finish the finish the in the in the future and uh, form the uh, structure like the picture just on the left. It will cover all. Of the all of the world, all country. So that's uh, what I have to say. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Doctor He. Are there any any questions for the speaker? I I do have one question. Uh, in uh, I think it's in your second or third slide. In your one of your early earlier slides, you 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 mentioned that uh. 
the power generation will be 0.8 cents cheaper than local wholesale prices. Uh, can you can you go back to that slide? Yeah, this one. Uh, uh, right, when you say 0.8 US cents cheaper per kilowatt hour, uh, have you included the, the, the maintenance costs of the transmission infrastructure? Yes, uh, I think uh, we can uh, give the conclusion like this. Just uh, because uh, 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 I want to explain in in two in two parts. Mm -hmm. The the good resource of like of of solar power, just like uh, in China, is mm -hmm. in the West. Uh, the annual used power is much higher than the east. The number may be mm -hmm. maybe double. So the price is cheaper when the when the uh, solar power generated. And uh, uh, in the long distance, we use the UHV technology or some mm -hmm. other transmission line. The the cost on the line, the loss, the loss on the line, and the cost on the line is much lower than the uh, distributed uh, or called a decentralized uh, resource. So uh, we just consider read about the total facts get that conclusion. Uh, now with, with, with the uh, lower cost of electricity from uh, you know, using this UHV technology, how, how many years will it take to recover the cost, the cost of building the, the whole the infrastructure? I think uh, uh, it depends on the, depend on the energy of uh, Transmission on the line, so uh, I can I can give a give a normally year. It's about uh, twelve or fifteen years. Okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, there is one question in the Q and A section: How do the yes. risk of global energy networks compare to the risk of small energy networks? Okay, uh, I think uh, this question I have been might uh, have might uh, in some occasions. Uh, global energy network uh, at at this stage it's uh, it's only a idea idea concept. There's a lot of risk uh, in the future. It uh, may be influenced by the political and uh, influenced by some some reason from from the uh, unstable unstable uh, relationship uh, unstable economy economy situation if <clears throat> we consider it about uh, we just the uh, I talk about the benefit of interconnection. We can focus on the fix, focus on the uh, low cost and uh, complementary to the both sides, just like this. But if we um, neglect the risk, I think uh, it's also is 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 wrong, but uh, I will give uh, another conclusion about how to understand this. Just because in the next uh, five years, next uh, ten years, we called for all the people to realize uh, to realize the power system 
named uh, neutral carbon and uh, 100% renewable, renewable energy. That is cannot, uh, cannot be realized uh, with only the microgrid with a localized grid. If we have a good situation like, a, like a, a China, like a United States, the solar power can be support each other, can, can support east and east and west. It's easy. We we must uh, consider consider it about uh, how to fully use of it. That's mm -hmm. what I, I respond to the first question. I will take a look at the so, second. Yeah, how does the cost of the global network compare with energy storage? Such as palm hydro. Yes, we have uh, we have uh, compared uh, we have compared uh, the cost. Uh, the global interconnection. Uh, if we just uh, put uh, in a uh, in a national wide uh, scale, just like uh, um, China or a big regional grid in China. The cost of interconnection is uh, much lower than uh, than to build a uh, energy storage like uh, such as pumped hydro. Just because if you want to finish a uh, pumped hydro in China, you cannot find uh, so so uh, much capacity to finish the uh, match, finish the, finish the job of match renewable energy. If we consider it about uh, get rid of all the natural power plant, get rid of all, all the coal plant, it's only wind, solar, and some hydro. The fluctuate of hydro, it's, I think it's, it's little, but the fluctuate of uh, wind and solar is much big. You cannot find the, 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 the match the capacity to, to finish this job. This is first. And the second, the cost is not at the same level. It may be uh, the interconnection cost is only half of the build uh, the pump the hydro. Even you consider it about the, the other uh, storage is much is much expensive. Thank you. On this topic of the global network, I have another question. Have people started talking about the standards <clears throat> for such a global network? If we consider it about uh, the UHV, and uh, some some standard for the uh, HV, EHV, we call the EHV, 500 kilowatt, uh, we call the EHV. EHV and mm -hmm. UHV, from the equipment, I can, I can uh, give some conclusion. Uh, in United States, and in China, in Japan, the equipment standard is almost the same. But the operational standard have much different. Hmm. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Okay, so if there is no more question, uh, I would like to thank the speaker, uh, Dr. He, this is a, an interesting very interesting presentation. Yeah. And thank you again for giving us this presentation at, at, at 5.30, <laughs> your time, 5.30 a.m. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, uh, the next seminar is in two weeks, uh, on May 13th, so see you in two weeks.
Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.